Yes, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Stephen Housen, time for a little bit of transfer talk. And there's one that I actually think there's a real good opportunity for Manchester United, and that's this guy, Ruben Neves. And big fan of him. Not quite as big as a, a fan as I am of, of him as Saul, but do you know what? A very, very, very viable option for United if we want to be looking at a midfielder that maybe offers a little bit something different. I think Carrick is more... Sorry, Neves is more in the Carrick kind of role as a as a midfielder um, than than Sal is, and I th certainly think he's got that deep line playmaker thing sewn down a lot more than Sal Neves ever does. Um, Sal, I would liken a bit more to Ander Herrera, is a little bit more combative, a little bit more maybe box to box. Um, and I, I'm seeing quite a few people constantly question the why would we be in for Sal? He's not a DM. You've got to listen. United aren't thinking in those sort of 6, 8, 10 necessarily sort of positions. So stop thinking like that and just think they want midfielders, people who can advance the ball up the pitch that can do everything a midfielder is there to do. So stop thinking exactly like that and think about who could actually fulfil the role that United are looking for, not the role that you want or necessarily the role that I would like to see us fill. That being said... I think Ruben Neves does fit that bill. So Romano's come out and said, Neves is on a list of United, but nothing has advanced, and it's very quiet on the list of opportunities. For me, the, the money that was touted and quoted for, for Ruben Neves was an absolute bargain. He's still extremely young, still someone that has got so much Premier League experience, good level of international experience. 35 million was rumoured to be the fee. I don't understand why there's not loads of teams coming in for him. Honestly, I thought Pep would have been in for him because I think he's the sort of player that Pep would love. Um, Fabrizio said he's not desperate to leave Wolves if the right bit of lives, him, him leaving is a serious possibility. At the moment, United have loads of opportunities in the market for midfield, but it depends on Pogba's future and also possibly on Van der Beek and Matic. Nothing's imminent at the moment, but it's worth keeping an eye on. Uh, never said recently, um, I'm talking about Lige, new coach. He's a very good coach, and I'm really happy to work with him. Um, and apparently Matt Judge has already talked to the representatives of Ruben Nevers, according to Rob Dawson from ESPN. So no real concrete sources saying that United are, are definitely on the cards for him, that we've definitely put some bids in. Nothing like that, but it does seem like, look, he's one of the people that you're looking at. And if your, your A choice has maybe moved on, then maybe your B choice um, has popped up a little bit and, and that might be the case. Um, <laughs> never mind. Um, I need to listen to something that's just come through, but I can't. Um, so he fits in really well in a 4 2 3 1. He fits in really well as a 6 in a 4 3 3. He's the youngest captain in Champions League history. Listen, I am a massive, massive fan uh, and I, I rate him a hell of a lot. Um, Ruben Nevers can lose the ball too much with his passes. Yeah, but people say that about Bruno as well. If you're a playmaker, you're trying to make play happen. It's not always about, like, David May was the guy with the most passes at one point in United. Does it mean he was a better passer than David Beckham? Absolutely not. Um, Ross says, I'd love Murph and Ruben Nevers to come to United and 35 million is a bargain price. The Bilgi says, I think Basuma and Didi style players are good, but they are rigid in terms of playing style. Neves or Niguez will be top. My personal choice, Kimmich, unfortunately, would never happen. I echo quite a lot of what you've just said there, to be honest with you. Um, what would the pricing be for Neves, and is he willing to join United? I've no idea whether he'd be willing to join. I haven't heard either way, to be honest, but 35 million is the rumoured um, amount, and that's the one that works for me. Um, I think we'll have to wait and sell to buy from here on says koth mike yeah do you know what i think there might be a little bit of something in that one now and someone said late to the stream do you prefer neves or niguez in all i, I i'm just a fan of sal niguez and i would find a spot for him in the team but dependent and again like romano said you're gonna have to look at what happens with um with paul pogba uh, and I have it on pretty good authority that because no one else can play that role at United at the moment, Michael Carrick is still the best defensive midfielder at the club. And when they play matches and he joins in, he still looks like Michael Carrick of old. The The issue is he, he ain't playing for us anymore. He ain't registered anymore. 
Ruben Neves is as close to that Michael Carrick character and actually he's probably got a better strike on him than Michael Carrick ever had, or at least he's more willing to strike than Michael Carrick ever was because Carrick never really took a lot of shots. He added goals later in his career, but, you know. Um, Neil says, is this true? Is it another story to make the headlines? I, I, I absolutely believe it's true, yeah. Um, I absolutely believe it's true. True as in there he's on a list and he's not necessarily imminent because that's what they're saying so yeah do i believe that a hundred percent i believe that yeah um darren says a lot of the rumors around us signing the midfield that seem to be linked to what happens with pogba yeah and to be honest i think that that's valid united don't have a magic money tree where we can just you know this isn't footy manager or fifa where you, you've got to balance the books at united and maybe we already know what's happening with Pogba. Maybe we don't know what's about to happen with Pogba. And I do think that the Pogba factor can play a big part into this. If you know Pogba's going and you know that he's going on a free, you can maybe start to plan some things and line them up now. If you think Paul Pogba might stay, well, you want to try and build your team around Paul Pogba because he's one of the best midfielders in the world. So... Does whatever happened this summer hinge on whatever's going on with Paul Pogba? You better believe it does. Because if he goes, you've got a massive figure to replace. And if he stays, you've got a massive asset that you're going to want to integrate and get the best out of in your team. So, of course, it is. Now, as for my personal favourite, I do feel I really think that Neves fits this team in a massive, massive way. And if I was trying to be logical about this, he probably fits it better at least from us looking on the outside what do united need i think Neves probably fits what we all assume united need a little bit more than what saul brings but what i like about saul or saul is um i think he's just got a bit more attitude about him i think he's got a bit more bite about him and i like that i like character i, I like character and that's the one that's the one for me is is a little bit on the character um Next up on the possible ins, and honestly, there's like it's like a love triangle in fucking Hollyoaks or something. So you got Trippier, you got Williams, and you have got Diogo Dolo. Now, what's going to happen with these lot? Well, again, Romano's had a little bit of an update on this, and it says Kieran Trippier's situation is still quiet as United need to clarify Diogo Dolo's future. AC Milan want him. United have asked for four to five million plus the option to buy which honestly is a free transfer. That's ridiculous. Um, and it's heavily dependent on what happens with Delo. There was some talk that um, there are people coming around, coming to, Ma to Manchester or to London to, to discuss stuff. There was discussion supposedly with Diego Simeone happening today. Ornstein has come out and said at the start of the window that right backs considered a subsidiary position with Trippier amongst the options that are being considered. And Trippier's continuity at Madrid is worrying Simeone because he's insistently wanted by United. And perhaps you're know, with English players not really venturing abroad too much, you've got to think that is it on his mind that he's always going to come back to England at some point and maybe they need to get somebody in that might stick around? Brandon apparently still wants to leave on loan, according to the MEN, and there's a loan fee of £2 million wanted for Williams, which, again, I think is absolutely fair. But with Tellez injured, Trippier could be the perfect backup because he could play in both positions. And again, I think people are overlooking Ethan Laird. Now, Ethan returned to training. For those that have been asking, why hasn't he featured uh, in any preseason games? He had an operation at the back end of last season from an injury that he picked up in the last game um, of the season. And he's returned to training today. Today was his first training session back with the team. So he is hopefully on the road to recovery. Has he got the opportunity now in preseason? No. And uh, he's going to have to work damn hard now to get any sort of minutes prior to any window closing so it's someone's gonna either have to take a risk on him or maybe the best thing that could happen is he has to stick around and maybe he gets given the opportunity um off the bench somewhere to show what he's about because for me the the ceiling on ethan laird is absolutely astronomical hell of a player um hell of a future in the game so long as he can stay injury free and that's about it really um Mac is in the house. He says, hello, princess. Hello, I thought you was coming. Well, you're not coming in today. I had someone coming round to come and see you today as well. Zizu himself, kind of. In fact, oh, where is he? Let me just check if he's messaged me. He's not messaged me. 
Um, Lady so unlucky, says Oliver. Yep. Um, why do people dislike Neves? The thing is, it just, this is always happening, right? You see players... Um, Harry Maguire's probably... No, nah, probably not a good example, actually. But you see tons of players, until they play for a big club, they don't really get selected for internationals. That's changing in the last few years, I guess. But then suddenly they're at a big club and all, oh, they're getting selected for internationals all the time. When like, I've been playing like bottom half of the table and been this good for years. What's all that about? Um, don't think trips will come. Um, we should just give Delo. We would give Delo another go this year. I'm not sure all he's having Delo in the slightest at all. Um, again, Delo. Delo's not a massive drama to have around. Um, I don't think. I I do think that um, Trippier would be a, a decent little utility player that could fill in and certainly give us something different from set pieces and when we're playing teams that are going to low block us a little bit. But, you know, it's one of those, isn't it? Um, only thing I'm scared of with Niguez is his dropping form over the last two years. Why do Atletico want to get rid of him now? It's down to his um, release clause, I think. Yes, he didn't have a good season last season. But, you know... It happens sometimes, doesn't it? I mean, if you looked at some of the signings that we'd made, Leeds tried to sell us Eric Cantona. Sometimes people make a mistake when it comes to selection. Um, does it say Trippier's 23? Yeah, that's not right. Um, Nevers would dictate play, spread the ball, um, and would help with the build-up, says Active Asset. Yep, um, you're right on that one. What do I think Oli dislikes about Delo? Uh, I think he's a little rash, and I think he defensively, I don't think he's up to the standard of any of the rest of them. That's the one. Um, if I could get Sal for 30 million and then take Sal, but if Nevers available for 25 to 30 million and take Nevers. Listen, either of these, here's the thing, right? If we've we got to decide between Nevers and Niguez, do you know what? Who gives a shit? If we get one of those, I'll be absolutely delighted. Um, and a youth that I think will play in the first team next season none none that haven't already debuted I wouldn't have thought no I think Alanga is looking very very sharp on pre-season and he he's got a real good opportunity to to burst through in and make himself someone that the club has to take notice of especially with Rashford being injured and Tony Marshall and just coming back from injury as well I really do think that Alanga's got a great opportunity, you know. Um, Lucas says, if you can get Neves and Saul for 70 million combined and Pogba is going, then you just get both. Now, if you can get both of those, that like he's just said, and Pogba's going, you can get 50, 60 million for Paul Pogba and literally just go, all right, call it quits, bring those two in. You have just massively upgraded midfield. And if your midfield three is Sal Niguez, Ruben Neves and Bruno Fernandes. Jesus Christ. What a midfield that is. You're going to start talking about that being the best midfield in Europe. To go with a midfield, to go with a defence that people are talking about could be one of the best defences in Europe. And then you look at the attack. This is how you start to build a team. I don't know if you've got the depth in every area, but this is what you've got to be able to do. You know? Zaid says, is Ollie brave enough to change McFred? He seems to play it safe too much. Look, he was playing Andreas Pereira week in, week out until he brought Bruno in and was like, hmm, there we go, you play now. He's playing him because he's got to play him. So his tackle per 90 isn't convincing. You've got to look at where he plays. This is the problem with stats. Stats are a great tool and I love stats, but you've got to look at the context of where they're playing. It's like saying, oh, this keeper doesn't make a lot of saves. He plays for City and he has to make three a month. Right, when you play for Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid, they play in a low block four four two very very often. How many tackles are they making? They force them wide. You'll probably see a higher percentage of tackles made by wingers and fullbacks than you do by uh, the by the central midfield. Central defenders very rarely make tackles. Their tackles per game are way lower than midfielders and fullbacks. Why? Because you're not seeing a lot of defenders, central defenders, making 1v1 tackles. It's the same if you're a midfielder in Diego Simeone's team. Because they're so compact and they force you wide, that guy's like a centre-half, really, not making a hell of a lot of tackles. 
you've got to look into the deeper context of why things happen in football. And for me, Atletico Madrid are a very interesting combination because you don't always know exactly what you're getting when you try to compare like for like stats. Um, Edward says that argument's nonsense. Simeone's modus operandi is aggressive workhorses all over the pitch. I never said he was being lazy, did I not? I said, you're just not making tackles. He's not got the opportunity to make tackles. Not as often as the players in the wide areas are going to be when he's playing a narrow, compact system. Uh, could Sol play in the six? Yes. Um, is Camavinga a non-starter at this point? I don't think so. No, I think I think um, Camavinga's a, a, a possibility, but I think they're trying to improve the first 11 first. Um, one does where, wonder where Donny fits into all of this. Again, we will see. Do I think we will buy anybody else? Yeah, I, th I think we will. Yeah. I definitely think we will. Anyway, cheers for tuning in. Um, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Laters.